And let us open with prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, uh, by which he was vindicated. He was uh, shown to be exactly who he claimed to be, uh, your son, our savior, uh, the one who went all the way to the cross for all of our sins uh, so that we might have forgiveness and eternal life. We pray, Lord, that as we uh, spend the next uh, hour studying your word, that that word might strengthen our faith in uh, the risen Savior uh, and give us confidence to proclaim him in the various opportunities you give us uh, to share this good news. And in Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. Last week, we dealt with this section of Jesus' words to his disciples on that Monday Thursday regarding the hatred of the world that Jesus prepares them for the reality of being hated for Jesus' sake. And this serves not only to um, prevent them from being shocked by it when it happens, but, but also comforts them. Because what he's saying is, when, when the world hates you, reviles you, persecutes you, it's doing so because of me. Which means that if this is happening, it is a, a sign that they are on Jesus' side. Therefore, they may rejoice even in the, the world's hatred of them. Uh, and that applies to, to, to us, to, to the whole church that uh, it, it's, it's because of our allegiance to Jesus that the world is, is naturally going to hate us and hated him first. If you go uh, to verse, um, this is John 15 in verse um, 21, 21. Uh, we were just uh, touching this, uh, treating this as we... Uh, uh, left last time, uh, but all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they wouldn't be guilty of sin, but now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without cause. So we can see that in Jesus' sights, in this particular section, when, when he talks about the world's hatred of his disciples, the, the world here is um, primarily the Jews that reject him. That, that it's his Jewish enemies, his Jewish opponents, at, at least here. Of course, the world in general is going to hate the church. But, but when he turns to, when he specifically speaks of, <laughs> of, of doing good works and, and they reject him nevertheless, and this makes them guilty of sin in a way that they wouldn't have been guilty if he hadn't come or if he hadn't done the, these works in front of them. Uh, that we know from, from all of John's gospel is, is specifically speaking of the, uh, the, the, the Jewish enemies of, of Christ that, that plot his murder. Um, and, and we were saying at the end last time that this is nothing new in John's gospel. Uh, he has said words to this effect already, right? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. But here he says it again in terms of hating me is to hate the father who sent me. That, that you can't despise God's son and, and yet believe in God the father. God, God the father does not accept such belief. Um, uh, it, 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 the, 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 the two are, are one in this sense. Um, and, and also tells us that... Uh, well, I, I, let, let me pause for a second and, and let you ask any questions that you might have about these words before I say any more before we move on. Is there anything about this particular section that, that, that strikes you as, I don't know, unclear or strange or unexpected? 
I think you talked about this last week. I, I listened. <laughs> the meat words. Yeah. All of it. Right. Right. You know, people keep thinking of Jesus as this person that never said with a lamb on his shoulder, right? Uh, never said a bad word. Well, he's pretty. Yeah, he's very severe here. Yeah. Yeah. Which, as, as hard as it is for any of us to realize this, but we do, we do certainly as children growing up, that to be severe for the sake of saving someone is the most loving thing. I mean, this is life and death. This is an eternal, this is an eternally, an eternal question that he's addressing. Eternal salvation. And so, if the truth of the matter is, sinners cannot stand before a holy God. And the truth of the matter is, the only one who has done anything to make it possible for our sins to be forgiven, covered, so that a holy God can receive us in his presence, is Jesus. Then telling people it's okay not to believe in Jesus is truly to hate that person because you're telling them a lie that will damn them into hell. But, 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 but what, what's always the fear? The fear we, we don't want to say something that will hurt the feelings or will upset them or will lead to a, an unpleasant uh, conversation. <laughs> so, you know, what, what is it? You know, Ray, you like the story of the is the pilot right that that, that that the co-pilot doesn't tell him he's, he's doing the wrong thing yeah, yeah. and then the, you know the plane crashes and they die because yeah. you know, he don't want to appear to be a jerk yeah. so yeah. And, and yet when, when it comes to this you you don't uh, sugarcoat the words when the words getting the words right mean life and death um there, there's there's no other god who has done something about that which separates us from God and from heaven. And, and so we tell the truth about this Jesus, whether the, the person we tell it to receives it or, or, or accepts it. And think about it. What, what Jesus is saying here is the, the, the guilt of his enemies is due to what? What, 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 what has happened? That, that makes them guilty of sin, as he puts it. They've heard it. They've seen it. In other words, Jesus comes along healing the sick, causing the deaf to hear, the blind to see, the lame to walk. And what's their reaction? They reject him. And so it's as if it would have been better for them if Jesus had just quietly gone only to the door, you know, not knocked on the doors of, of, of those who would accept him and, and not done any of this other good stuff in, in, publicly. But now that he has done it publicly, they have no excuse. And what are they rejecting? They're rejecting good works. <laughs> you know, it, it's not like they, you know, he, he upset them in some way or hurt them in some way. No, they, they reject him on account of him doing good. Um, and, and so we might also stop to, to make clear that in isolation, out of context, we, 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 th this can be uh, misconstrued or misused. When he says, if I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin. Well, he, he's not talking about sin in general. Of course, we're all guilty of sin. We, you know, read, read, read the book of Romans. And no one is without excuse. See, even the Gentiles without the law are a law unto themselves. They have the, the law written on their hearts. He's not talking about they wouldn't be guilty of sin in general, but now they're guilty of what sin specifically or particularly? Rejecting him. Yeah, they're, they're guilty now of the, the sin of rejecting Christ, of rejecting God's son. Um, but now they have no excuse because he has made it plain. Through his teachings and through his signs. That's such a big part of John's gospel. That they're not just miracles, they're not just um, uh, good works, or uh, you, you have this other word in the Greek that would that we would translate as a miracle, but miracle um, 
uh, just something to marvel at might, might, might be a, a better way of, of translating that miracle word in Greek. But, but here, John, is, he never calls them miracles. They're always signs. So what do signs do? They point to something. So starting with turning the water into wine at, at Cana, the signs are pointing, that those works are pointing to something bigger. And, and the thing to which they point, the Jews seeing it, witnessing it, reject, deny, re refuse to believe. Is there uh, anything in that passage where he talks about the get seen and yet don't, don't believe? Mm -hmm. He seems to be coming down more harshly on those people than those who have never seen and, and have not rejected. They just are ignorant. Uh, yes. And, and does, that, yes. does that apply today? Uh, or, or what's the difference? I mean, it, it, you get people, uh, even although it's less likely, you get people even today have never heard the gospel. Right. Right. Uh, those that hear it and reject it, are they more guilty than those who never heard it? I mean, how does that how does that play out? So, what one of the things we we can't do is sort of pit this section, which which has to, to do with the Jews who reject him specifically. Yeah. You know, he's not dealing with everything. He's dealing with this narrow case. Right. And and that that's partly why I made a point to say he's not talking about sin in general. He's not saying you know obviously all of us are sinners. That's the whole reason he came. That that's part of the offense of Jesus' message is that we're all sinners in need of him. So when he says they wouldn't be guilty of sin had he not come and done these, these, these signs in front of them, uh, well, well, they still would have been guilty of sin. But they're, now they're not guilty of this specific sin. But what, what, what this does, though, when you think about it, not to say that, oh, those who are ignorant are off the hook. No, but as we'll see as we move into this next section about the particular work of the Holy Spirit, what he's going to convict the world of is that now rejection of Jesus becomes the culminating sin. That is to say, sin's not a problem. With Jesus. He's come to save us from sin. So what's the ultimate problem? What's the ultimate sin? Unbelief. Yeah. Unbelief. I mean, he's raising, you know, the all the other sins can be dealt with through his sacrificial death and resurrection. But the sin of rejecting me, that cuts you off forever. What does that say about those who remain ignorant until their their dying day? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it doesn't say anything. It doesn't speak to that at all. It doesn't speak to that at all. In other words, we don't. So, 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 well, we have to go to other places in the scripture for that. But See? it does kind of speak to works theology. Yeah. As being, as being not enough. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And see, part of our, our sin is. We are naturally, we are by nature adherence to the religion of the law. Well, whatever that law ends up being, but but everyone is born sinful, and that means everyone is born believing somehow that something they do or feel or think earns for them merits for them salvation. Um, so so I would say this, absolutely, this doesn't let off anyone. We're all born sinful, and, and we'll all be judged for our own sins on the last day, with or without Christ. But it, it's, it's now the case that now that Christ has come, and in the case of someone who has actually heard the gospel, they're now doubly guilty. We're all born guilt, guilty of, our, of, of, the, of the sin that is ours. But now we're doubly guilty if we then presented the solution to that sin. And on top of the sin we've already got, reject that too. Is that the sin against the Holy Spirit? Is that the sin against the Holy Spirit? I don't think so. I don't think that, that you, 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 you end up in the same place 
<laughs> because of it. But but when the Holy the sin against the Holy Spirit is discussed in the scriptures, you know, two things to know. One, it's unusual. It, it is treated as something special. So that in Mark. This is Jesus. Jesus talk, invokes the, the sin against the Holy Spirit, which cannot be forgiven in, in the context of his enemies accusing him of doing works by the power of the devil. There are people that are indifferent, dismissive of the gospel, who would never go so far as to say, the good works Jesus did, he did it by Beelzebub. So we've got to recognize that this is something more extreme than just generic unbelief. As damning as unbelief is, but the sin against the Holy Spirit is, is kind of unto itself a very special case. And there's been many atheists, right, that have become right. So you if yeah, it's a sin against the Holy Spirit. You can't, you can't go back from that. that yeah, that's so what they're. So Hebrews speaks of it uh, first. Let's see, either second or third John, but one of one of the the, the John letters, that that phrase or, or that um, category, sin against the Holy Spirit, it, it appears about four times in the New Testament, and in all cases, it's treated as something kind of almost beyond the pale. Not, not just generic unbelief, but it's also presented as a warning. Like in Hebrews especially, as, as a warning. What, what, what's the warning? The warning is this, that, that those who are most, the, the, it, it, it's not the, the unconverted person. <laughs> it's the converted person that needs to be warned about the sin against the Holy Spirit, that you who have uh, tasted and seen that the Lord is good, for you then afterwards to turn your back on God and fall away it is, to, is, is to risk this, that this falling into the sin of the, of, of the whole, uh, against the Holy Spirit, that, that, that you knew and sort of in full knowledge rejected it. Right, you had been, you know, think of the, the parable of the sower and the four soils. And so you, you've got someone kind of in that, 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 that maybe that third bunch that, that had gone along for a while, believing and there was joy. And then something comes along to make you turn your back on that joy that you knew and believed in. That's risking the, the committing the sin against the Holy Spirit, which is to say, you've so hardened your heart against the gospel that God confirmed you in that hardened condition, like He did with uh, the think of Pharaoh. See, Pharaoh hardens his heart first, and then after so many so many attempts at bringing Pharaoh around, now it says God hardens his heart, which is to say. God said, okay, have it your way, and, and we're going to keep it that way. The, the, the old, uh, you know, story of uh, the, the, the woman threatens to, 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 to walk out on the, on the husband, and, and, he, and he says, uh, you, 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 can, you can walk out the door we're still married, but, but, but once, you, once you close the, the, the gate of the garden, and step out onto the road, it's over. And, and so the, 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 the one who's kind of in between the door and the garden gate is in a very dangerous place, spiritually speaking. That's the warning part, to recognize that there is a crossing through the garden gate with God, where, where God says, okay, you, you've turned your back against me. This is the way you want it. Then so, so be it. And, and, and for us, humanly speaking, we don't know when that's happened in another soul's case. And so we treat every soul as still open to conversion. 
to being brought back, to, to you know, being a prodigal son and, and, and being brought back. But yet God, through his word, warns each of us that none of us should think himself immune from, from, from falling into that temptation. Does that, is everybody, is that, is that helpful? I, I as, a, as a pastor, you know, th th this is, comes up. I mean, those are very frightening words that, that, that it is possible for a Christian who has known the, the, the joy of salvation to, to fall away and to fall away in such a way that there's no possibility of, re of return. And so what do I do with someone who fears that he or she has committed that sin? My answer is always in those cases, obviously not, or you wouldn't be worried about it. Yeah. You, you see, the fact that there's that struggle is a sign the Holy Spirit is still very much at work in me. The one that's hardened to the point of, of, of uh, no longer being uh, converted is, is the one that doesn't care anymore. So it's an ongoing sin rather than. Yeah, yeah. Again, to be hardened in that state, yeah. you, you know, you're you're going to look like it. <laughs> uh, you are hardened in that state, and so don't, don't care anymore. But 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 for for any of us, this side of of that, to to, to realize, ah, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We stay in the Word, lest that this happen to me. I mean, if it can happen to a David. Yeah. Or a Peter. Yeah. See, I, you know, they, thanks be to God, they, they weren't hardened in that state of rejection, but they were for a time having, you know, turning their back on God. I mean, David thought, I, I've, I've got one past him, right? Uh, I, I got away with adultery and murder. And the people love me because here I am, the, the heroic, uh, chivalrous, King swooping in and taking up this poor widow, uh, and and raising uh, her child as my own. He's 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 got it, you know. He's 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 pulled it off until Nathan comes on God's behalf and says, "You are the man." So for how many ever months? I mean, we're pretty close to the the birth of the child. You know, David's in a very dangerous place for those seven, eight months that he thinks he's pulled the wool over God's eyes. Anyway, likewise, Peter, and between uh, you know the, the Garden of Gethsemane and the cock crowing, he with an oath, I swear to God, I don't know. Him. He's 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 in he's in no safer he's in you know no less dangerous a place than Judas. So, but Pastor, well, you know, Peter in that situation, you know, we don't know. It's so easy to look at that. And we would say we'd never do that. But yeah. if some, if you feared the life of your family and you right. had to reject Christ, yeah. could we do that? Right. You know, and his fear was not to that extreme, but he probably did fear his life. Mm -hmm. And so it's so easy to say, why did oh, Peter do that? Right. Know? That's right. Um, but he was in, but probably in his heart, he probably still believed. What do you do with that person that you see that you really care about? It could be a family member. It could be a friend that you, you saw them walk out that garden gate. Yeah. I mean, there's people I continuously pray for that I hope they walk back in. Right. Yeah. You know? yes, they, with that particular analogy, you know, you're taking something physical and visible, right? To, to, to better explain something spiritual. Yeah. We don't know it, it, with with the husband and wife. Yeah, you you, you see the moment where where the, the the gate's been been opened and closed. Spiritually speaking, we don't know. We don't know. We God does. We don't make that judgment. Well, when we, they we come out that, and say, they just come out and say it. Yeah. Then it gives you a pretty good ideology, or. If, I've seen someone that I care about walk out now plans to be a witch yeah. because she thinks, you know, she's in her forties. She thinks it's cool on social media right. to do that. And it's right. a family member that I really care about. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, 
I pray for that person all the time. Right. As you should. They see the Absolutely. Line. Right. See, see, that's the, again, that would make no sense to pray for that person if it was possible for us to know. We don't. Right. And, and so, as we say, we can treat everyone as still open to God's grace. It's, it's still possible uh, until their very last moment. Jesus' mercy is there for that person. And so, uh, but God knows and, and, and God warns us that this can happen to each one of us. So, so that, that's, that's to take that as a warning, not as a way to say, hmm, I wonder who in my life has done this. You see, which is a shame because that is how that sometimes gets taught in, in our, our, our churches in America. And so that gives license to or permission to Christians to write others off. And to say, I'm pretty sure that one's committed the sin against the Holy Spirit. So we're, waste, we're wasting that time on that one. Right? In which case, we don't even pray for that one, right? Because sin against the Holy Spirit can't come back. But we don't know in any one case whether that has truly happened. Like you just said with Peter. See, we don't know what's in his heart. Now, I think Peter himself would say, no, no, no. I, I, I blew it. Right. If he had trusted Jesus, he would not have done what he did. Right. That that, that fear had, had overtaken him in such a way that there, there was not belief in that in that in those moments. So, I mean, as we know, I mean, the disciples don't seem to have really I mean, the way John's gospel is told. They don't really believe until after the resurrection. And then it Couple yeah, and then and then and now yeah, then it, it, it still took a while to simmer. Let's say, but then what? Then what? Then, then they're so bold they're they're willing to die on a cross. Have, have you seen this? Pastor Dobby said this to me uh, a few days ago. The, the Babylon Bee has this uh, spoof parody video of if the resurrection were a hoax. Have, you haven't seen this? Oh, it's so well done. It's it's uh, but it, it's all the disciples gathered around uh, the campfire. And um, Peter stands up and he says, uh, all right, we need 100 percent participation in this. Uh, and you know, one of them says, uh, all 12 of us are here. Oh, well, 11, 11. Uh, OK, 11, we'll, 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 we'll settle for 11. But, but, but as you all know, uh, Jesus is, is dead. Yes. I've got an idea, though. OK, follow me, follow me. Okay, what we're going to do in the middle of the night, we're going to steal his body. Okay, all right, I like it so far. I like it. Okay, and then we're going to tell the world he rose from the dead. Oh, love it, love it. And then we're all going to be brutally murdered. And John stands up and says, uh, time out, time out, time out. It, it's clarification on that last part. Murdered, murdered, but, but, uh, it, between now and murder, we're, we're going to have fame and, and fortune uh, and, and you know all, everything we could possibly want, right? Uh, actually, John, no, no, we're going to be reviled and persecuted and hated for the rest of our lives. <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, J John ends up, uh, you know, then Thomas pipes up. And then, you know, John says, Thomas, surely, Thomas, surely you've got some doubts about this. Thomas says, no doubts whatsoever. I love it. I love the claim, right? And John says, I, I would be, uh, I I'd rather be exiled on a remote island than, than uh, go along with this. And then Peter comes up and says, well, I've got some good news for you. <laughs> so isn't that great? Very well done. Uh, but... That's the confidence that they had after the resurrection. They were told ahead of time, this is what it would mean to be his messengers. And they boldly, you know, you know these same people that fled in the moment, who denied him in the moment, who, who were, you know, for three years taught, followed this Jesus. And yet still when the time came, fear overtook them. But boy, after the resurrection, um, and that they all of you know. You know, 10 of the, those 11, 11 of the 12, because Matthias is brought in, 11 of those 12 die pretty violent deaths. 
and and, and, and John, the, the, the John that, that wrote this gospel for us, he too is is exiled and, and suffers much. Uh, but as far as we know, he's the one that died a natural death still. Uh, yeah, it that doesn't make much sense if, if it's a hoax, if it's a conspiracy that, that they're, they're all in on. Uh, you know, at least some would choose not to <laughs> die for something they know not to be true, but that's uh, the blood of the martyrs there. Pastor, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, you don't have to Well, I don't want you all to be shocked. At 1045, we're having a tornado drill, but you all do not have to leave. Okay. It'll be at our voices over the intercom, and then we're going to move into a fire drill, but it's not a real fire. <laughs> we're not ringing the alarm either, so if you all want to stay in here and continue, that's fine, but I all don't right. want anyone to be alarmed. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All these old Wednesdays, yeah. at least it's not Pastor Douthwaite steaming the, the alls. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That got yeah, yeah. He was, he was steaming the, 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 his all in the all for the room. The uh, fire department came out. We had to evacuate the school. So, oh, oh you didn't know that? Oh. Yeah, about two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the Wednesday before Holy Week, we, we uh, oh, that was fun. <laughs> Because we're all out there, like, what is going on? You're going to the fire trucks, and then that's the way she officially comes out of the sanctuary. <laughs> we have a steamer. Okay, I'll bring my clothes on. <laughs> no, 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 no. Steam them at home, please. Our fire alarms are too sensitive. Uh, okay. Um, so, the words written in the law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. I, I guess the, the, kind of the last thing to say is that the, the, the gospel, right, the, the free gift of the forgiveness of sins through Christ, we, we don't often think of this way, but when it's rejected, that same gospel now accuses you. That, that's the way Jesus' words work here is we, we think the law accuses. The law accuses us of our sin. The law uh, brings out that, that we are guilty of, of not living up to, to God's will. But here it's, it's the gospel as kind of the, 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 the ultimate accuser. Because, like, like we said before, all the other laws we break, we have forgiveness for through Christ. But if you reject the offer of forgiveness, then you're guilty not only of all those sins that you still aren't forgiven, but now of the one you're guilty of rejecting the very one Jesus, uh, the, the one that the Father sent to, to save you. Um, so Paul, Paul works this way in a sense in, in Romans, where, where, where he, he's, he's talking to kind of two different audiences. You've got Gentiles and Jews, and he says, look, uh, you Jews think your advantage over the Gentiles is the fact that you have in your heritage Moses and the giving of the law at Sinai, and he says, far from it, because the Gentiles, we can see, actually manage to keep the law more or less without it actually having been given them directly by God, you, meanwhile, who were given the law directly by God, don't keep it any better than they do. And so the fact that you had this in your heritage, the giving of the law at Sinai, makes your law breaking doubly bad, right? That, that, that the Gentiles will be judged for, for their keeping or breaking of the law without the law. That is to say, God is going to hold them, as it were, to a lower standard, because there was no moment in the Gentiles' history where God himself directly said, here's what I don't want you to do, here's what I want you to do. And they still managed, with the law written on their hearts, that vestige of being made in the image of God that, that we, we still are, are born with, they still managed to keep the law about just as well as God's own people have. But here's God's people who have no excuse. God himself said, here's, here's, here's the deal. And, and then they, they live as they've done. Um, so, so, so likewise, that, that event for, for Paul, the, the event for the Jews, that the Jews are trying to hold up as making them special, is the Sinai event. 
Moses coming down from the mountain with, with, with God's own words, telling them, here's how you are to, to, to live as my children. Here it's the fact these are their college. That's the event that makes them guilty in a way that they wouldn't have been if that event hadn't happened. If Jesus hadn't come, this moment of rejecting him then wouldn't have been made possible. But he has come, they have rejected him, and therefore they are now doubly guilty. So now in, in verse 26, so, so we've, we've got this, this um, prophecy, you might say, of the world's hatred of those who confess Christ. Now comes comfort. But when the helper comes, and see, here's that paraclete word again. We've had parakletos uh, once more, I think, uh, uh, in verse 26. So I wouldn't be surprised if, however, it gets translated in your Bibles, in verse 26 of chapter 14, it's how it gets translated in verse 26 of chapter 15. John, 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 this is a severe weather drill. This is a drill. This is a severe weather drill. Please go to your assigned location and take cover. This is a drill. So, anyone have something other than helper in those two verses? Counselor. Yeah, Counselor. Yeah. Very good. What else? Comforter. Comforter. And all those are part of the, the meaning of this, this parakletos. Or some Bibles will even, <laughs> it's, it's kind of the weasel way out. They, they just. Transliterate the the Greek into parable, right? And they 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 just leave it untranslated because it has such a, a a wide range of meaning. All those um, translate helper, comforter, advocate, counselor. The realm of of words that Paraclete is most often found in outside of the Bible is courtroom language. That paraclete is your, your advocate in a court of law. Now think of uh, you know, an attorney, a barrister in England. Uh, he, he's your advocate, which brings comfort, doesn't it? That, that if, you, if you're overwhelmed by some kind of legal mess you're in, to have an expert in the law represent you brings comfort and peace of mind. Okay, I, I'm not alone in this and, and have to suddenly... Uh, uh, become an expert on, you know, whatever, uh, uh, personal injury law uh, after a vendor vendor. No, I've got an attorney that's going to take care of this for me. Um, th that's, that's the idea here with, with who the Holy Spirit is in relation to the disciples being sent out as, as Jesus' witnesses. When the helper comes, whom I'll send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. He'll testify. And you also will testify. You also will bear witness because you've been with me from the beginning. A couple of things here. This, this is very much connected to the next several verses. Another one of those artificial chapter divisions in the, the, the unit, meaning-wise, really extends into maybe as much as the next um, 15 verses of chapter 16. But a couple of things, one kind of a Trinitarian point uh, we might as well make here. So notice he says, he's sending the, the, the Spirit, and the Spirit comes from the Father, okay? So I, I don't know how many of you are, are uh, aware of this, that there's um, a rift to this day between, we might say, the Western Christian Church and the Eastern Orthodox. Because in the Nicene Creed, we say of the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. If you were to attend uh, a, a service at a Greek Orthodox Church, that would not be said, the and the Son part. Okay. Uh, that, that the original, the original creed did not have and the son part. That got added in Western churches sometimes or sometime around, I want to say the sixth century. I think we see it as early as. Dang, dang. This is a fire drill. This is a fire drill. 
Central. That's why you know your location. Ding, ding, ding. This is a fire drill. So the so what do we say back to our Eastern Orthodox friends? I mean, if, if you were if you were to have a deep discussion with an Eastern Orthodox theologian, it turns out they don't necessarily deny that the spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. They're just really upset that we, we added to a creed without the approval of, yeah, uh, yeah everybody being involved. Th that's a little bit. Um, depending on, on which, which source you're consulting, uh, you will find some who would go to the mat on this and say that we're actually committing error by saying this. Well, we're not committing error. Uh, this is a verse that they would like to use, but, but you, you can't, again, pit one scripture against another. So I, I think maybe for, for our purposes here, without getting too deep into the weeds, it, it's worth pointing out that here it says uh, he is going to send the spirit of truth. Jesus is going to send the spirit of truth. Okay. But then in the present tense, who proceeds from the Father? Okay. So the, 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 the this is the, um, the, the, the ongoing um, existential fact. The, the spirit proceeds from the Father. And if we are to deduce from this that this excludes him proceeding from the son well when you get to the description in acts that not only does jesus send the spirit the father does so you can't have it both ways you can't say oh uh because it says he proceeds from the father he proceeds only from the father because in that case you should say only Jesus sends the Spirit. But we know in Acts, the Father also sends the Spirit at Pentecost. So, uh, do you dig it? <laughs> um, that, and, and I'll tell you, I, I like the fact that, that uh, and the Son is, is in the Nicene Creed. Because that comes about, if you read the history... That is how that creed was being confessed in some of the westernmost churches, the Spanish churches. Uh, so I believe in uh, Toledo, Spain, you, you, you first find the practice there. And, and the practice had spread, and, and so it kind of reaches the Pope's desk. And the, 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 the Pope basically is moved by the practice of actual Christians to say, all right, it's fine, right? But, but, but see, I, I like that, you know, it shows, you know, it, it's, not, it's not a top-down decision. That was a bottom-up one, right? This was organic to actual Christians and, and, and how they, they confess the faith in a particular place. And, um, and, and now, now here we have it. It wasn't, it wasn't the Pope decreeing out of, out of nothing you know, here's how we've got to say it from here on. No, no, no. The, 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 the Christians uh, in particular places were, were, were confessing this on the basis of Scripture. And it, it became something accepted by the, the, the wider Western church over time. Okay. You know, it's interesting, Pastor. So yeah, I had to look this up because my husband's Greek Orthodox. Oh, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Because, and then, you know, his whole family is Greek Orthodox. And when I'm there, I hear all about how... Really, okay. Oh, the Greek church is the first church. No, it's not yeah, much. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. But it's interesting that the, the Catholic Church wrote the Nicene Creed, but it was written in Greek because oh, the Catholic sure. Church was right. from Rome. Yeah, though, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. But then I'm surprised the Greek Orthodox Church even accepted that because the Catholic Church wrote it. No, 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 they didn't. Did. No, 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 no. It's a big division. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, let's be very careful. Let's not let the uh, the Roman Catholics. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, um, you've heard them talk about the Greek stock. Yeah, so so no, no, the, the, the Roman Catholic Church is newer than the Lutheran Church. Uh, that you don't really have in terms of the theology that that the Roman Catholic Church teaches today didn't really exist until the Council of Trent, which is 1580. Okay, 
okay. In the river. So, so, so the Augsburg Confession, our, our ultimate confessional document, is 1530. Right, so you could you could say to the extent the Lutheran Church was was born uh, on a certain day or a certain year, it was in 1530. The Council of Trent really makes what is distinctively the Roman Catholic Church today, the 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 the, the church that it is today. That that happens in 1580 at the Council of Trent. So it, it's it's not um, it, it it's it's a slight hand that that obviously they this is the story they want to tell. We're the oldest church, the Roman Catholics. Uh, we've always been around from the beginning. We'll, we'll do so the, the Eastern Orthodox can can just as rightly make that kind of argument because there's a split in about a thousand between the East and the West. So which gets to say we're we, we existed before, right? Because um, it's in 325. That's the Council of Nicaea. That's in the East under Emperor Constantine, who is an Eastern emperor, you know, they, they have as, as just as right a claim to argue the Nicene Creed is an Eastern Orthodox creed. But, but no, it's a universal creed. You know, the, the church wasn't divided then. And so everybody, East and West, came together to deal with this controversy over the divinity of Christ. Can it be said that uh, uh, before... Uh, uh, that that, uh, that there was a time when Jesus that when, when Christ was not. That's what Aaron is saying, this bishop, uh, and and the Council of Nicaea said, no, that is incorrect. Christ is eternal. He becomes incarnate at a particular moment in time, but the second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, is one with God in substance. That that He is eternal. There, there was never a time when Christ was not any more than there was ever a time when God the Father was not or the Holy Spirit was not. But but all that was hashed out in Nicaea under under a, an Eastern emperor. It, and that's why it's in Greek. Greek really remain, is the language of the church for probably the first four centuries. Latin comes later. So so the nice the original form of the Nicene Creed is is Greek. The original form of the Apostles' Creed is Greek. That that's the language of the church until uh, maybe the late four hundreds, early five hundreds. Yeah. So so does that help? So yeah, it, it it's not a, a Roman Catholic creed. It's it's a Catholic creed. Little C, if I can put it that way. Right. Oh, okay. We're Catholics. Like We're Catholics. Holy Catholic Church. You know, yeah. to say that. Then yeah, Catholic and, and we we could just as easily when we do that in church say one whole. Catholic and Apostolic Church. We, we, we ought not, yeah, this, this is uh, one, one of the, the, the biggest marketing coups ever pulled off for the Roman Catholics to get the exclusive rights to the word Catholic. No, no, we, Catholic means as believed everywhere at all times. And, and so the, there's a, a, a contradiction in being Roman Catholic. Because the Catholic part means everywhere, but the Roman part means just Rome. See, see, the, the, the Catholic Church, so long as they have the Pope and Rome as their head, that that's what makes you Roman Catholic. And we say, no, what makes you a Catholic is you believe in Jesus. And that's been done by people everywhere, whether they held the, the Pope up as the head of the church or not. Does, does, that, does that help? Yeah, really interesting. Yeah. So yeah, but that 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 it's it's the filioque it is is the the Latin, and of course that part's in in Latin because it came later when when Latin had become more of the language of the church than Greek. But but that's the, the que is a way to say and in Latin, and then this is from the Son, from the Son proceeds from the Father and from the Son, filioque. Your filial duty is the duty your son has to your, your to, to his parents. Right, beliefs. So anyway, um, but uh, the, the second thing to say uh, about this is that it's here in John that you notice we get this detail that you also will be bear witness. Why? Because you've been with me from the beginning, and 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 I love this uh, little. Um, uh, matter of, of uh, let, let's say, harmony 
Because when you get to Acts, go to Acts, and, and this is after the resurrection, after the ascension, Christ is ascended. And now they're waiting for the promise of the sending of the Holy Spirit to be fulfilled. Uh, and uh, what, what happens as they're gathered there? Peter, in uh, this is Acts 1, and <laughs> verse 15, go to 15. So uh, they're all uh, uh, with one accord. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, very, very much uh, a feather in Honda's cap to have this verse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in verse 15 in those days Peter stood up among the brothers the company of persons was in all about 120 and said brothers the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus for he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry and then it gives you a little background on what happened to Judas skip to um um Verse 21, verse 21. So, so, so Peter's made the case that he must be replaced. We, we, uh, there, there needs to be a 12. So verse 21, so one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. So this is Luke writing. The book of Acts is written by Luke. Luke does not tell us about Jesus saying what he said on Monday, Thursday to the disciples. He gives us an account pretty much of the, of the institution of the Lord's Supper, the, the sharing of the Passover together. But, but all, all this extended uh, discussion that we get in John isn't to be found in, in Luke's gospel. And so when we come to this business where Peter stands up and says, all right, here are the qualifications for Judas's replacement. He's got to be a guy that's been with us from the beginning, starting with John's baptism. Where did Peter get that? Jesus said so on this night in which he was betrayed, where he says, and you also will bear witness because you've been with me from the beginning. Get it? That's, that's the qualification. And it comes from Jesus himself. And, and, and it, it, I think that that's kind of cool because, because we're getting it from two sources, but they match up perfectly. You know, John's telling us, here's when Jesus said it. Here's Peter in, in a, a book written by Luke without, without referencing it. But, but now we know the reference. Now we know exactly where he got it. He's not making this up. Yeah. We know what, I'm uh, not following the beginning of what? The world, or no, the beginning of Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, Who, who's you know, uh, you've been with me from the beginning, yeah. So, so beginning at his baptism, uh, so so that though that narrowed the field, you remember, and so it came down to Matthias, uh, Matthias, and um, justice, justice, yeah, justice is kind of the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. Of the <laughs> right makes it to the Super Bowl, but always always loses. Yeah. Right, no, number two. This is interesting. Oh, 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 while, I'm, while I'm remembering this, there is a in Milwaukee. There is it's either a Matthias. I think it's a Justice Lutheran Church. Mm -hmm. A Justice Lutheran Church, and um. <laughs> And a school's attached, and you know what their symbol, the symbol of the school is? Dice. Dice? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See? Reason. But, but, but it makes sense, because they, they cast lots of sides at the bias or two. Well, so you um, try, you try that in a modern uh, day Lutheran church with three centers, you call them pastor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? There's two good candidates. Yeah. Go, go, go yeah. Can, can it go wrong? Right. So, so, so we're all going to serve the Lord's will by it. That'd go over real big. Yeah. <laughs> why, why shouldn't we be able to do that? Yeah, right. So we have the 12 specifically followed by Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And then we have all. Then we have these others like the two here that have been <clears throat> as, associated oh, with the 12. Yes, exactly. And then you've got yes. the 72. Yes. Which is the larger group. Right. Though I wouldn't be surprised if Matthias and Justice were among those 72. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that goes to, um, to be technically correct. Luke is, is uh, very good about this in, in, in his language. Um, Mark is too. Mark is too. Although, I, I think with Mark, yeah, for Mark, it's disciples as any believer in Jesus, and then it's the 12. You've got the disciples and the 12. But Luke is very careful to distinguish between disciples in general and the apostles. See, we, we so often call them the 12 disciples. But really, we're talking about the 12 apostles, because the, the group of disciples includes those 12 plus all these others who have been following Jesus around for a long time, witnessing his miracles, listening to his sermons. Um, so disciple just means student, a student, a learner, follower, I, I suppose, but, but really, that's where we get the word discipline. Disciple and discipline are, are, are both related to the, the root word it comes from. Um, it, it's interesting, the, the word in, um, in Greek, because obviously disciple is a, a Latin word, but the word in Greek is um, uh, mathetes, mathetes, where we get mathematics, right? So mathematics, broadly speaking, it's not just numbers uh, specifically, but it's a discipline. Mathematics is a discipline or a field of study. See, so a mathetes is a studier, someone who's learning. Uh, okay. So, but, but, but that, that encompasses everybody. The 12, though, are uniquely apostles, which is to say Christ has commissioned them to speak on his behalf with his own authority. And, and, and that's why it's not just that the, the books of our New Testament that are authoritative for us, it's not enough that they be written by a disciple. They need to be written by an apostle. So that we can trust that these words are as good as having come from Jesus, not directly. Because Jesus uniquely said of the, and he's about to say it here in the Gospel of John. You know, blessed are those who hear my word through them. Through, through these, you know, through 11 of these 12 here. Well, no, no, just the 11. And Judas has left already. Through them. Through their word. Okay. Um, one, let, let's see, can, can I say one more thing? Um, with, yeah, yeah, notice as we move into 16, which as I said, really ought not be separated from the previous two verses. I've said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. And here he warns them, what specifically are they going to do to them, right? He, he's talked about this hatred. Uh, in general, but now he says they will put you out of the synagogues. We saw that happen. All, it's already happening in Jesus' own during his own humble ministry. We saw that with the man that was born blind and the parents refusing to stick up for him. Ask him yourself. He's 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 old enough. Uh, and, and we're told why they were afraid to speak up for him because of being kicked. They were afraid of being kicked out of the synagogue. And so uh, this is going to start uh, happening, or, or it's going to get ramped up even after Jesus' death and resurrection, uh, happening to, uh, to believers. But indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he's offering service to God. So uh, we, we have a, a big example of this, don't we, in, in Paul. Paul thought he was doing God a favor by rounding these Christians up and having them thrown into jail or worse, right? There at uh, Stephen's martyrdom. Um, but, but this, again, is of a piece with what's already been said regarding he who hates me hates the Father who sent me. See, what, what, what do they think they're doing? 
They think they're loving the Father by hating Jesus. Or they're loving the Father, loving God the Father by hating those who believe in Jesus. And here's Jesus saying, it's going to look, look like that. They're going to think that. But you know better. And so we're, now we're going to get into uh, more specifically the work or the theology of the Holy Spirit. What his role is, what he's come to do. And it's to, it's, it's to bear witness, as, as we already heard, and to enable Christ's uh, human messengers, right? His normal messengers to bear witness. Um, so, so much, much to discuss there, because we will be Lutherans are, are often criticized for not uh, emphasizing the Holy Spirit enough. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll learn. Uh, why uh, the, the Holy Spirit's okay with that? <laughs> well, it's true. It's 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 true. He's not the the, the 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 object of our faith the way Jesus is. You see, it, it, the Holy Spirit wants the spotlight put on Jesus. He wants people to know that in Christ one has forgiveness of sins. The Holy Spirit didn't die on the cross. The Father didn't die on the cross. And so the the, the Holy Spirit. And so it'd be kind of like if, if all of our sermons had as their object the Holy Spirit as as as, as the one to uh, believe in and, and and hope in and so forth, it'd be kind of like if, if I were to come to you and tell you all about how Jesse Owens, you know, this really really fast runner, uh, you know, what 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 won this race, and then then you put a medal on me. <laughs> you see, I'm just a messenger. Yeah. <laughs> Owens won the race, right? The Holy Spirit is like, uh, Jesus died on the cross. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why you're giving me a medal <laughs> and rolling down the aisles and pretending to kill people. All right, let's close in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, we thank you on this Easter Wednesday for uh, our Lord's glorious resurrection, his, uh, his victory over sin and death, and that proclamation of, of peace, peace with you and uh, by peace with you, we have peace with one another. Help us continue to grow in our faith in uh, this uh, Easter gospel uh, that our sins have been paid for, uh, that uh, we have been reconciled to you through the atoning death of, of our Lord Jesus. And this we know because he rose again, never to die again. And may we bear witness in the various uh, uh, places and with the people that you put in our lives so they too may share in our joy, in Jesus' name, amen.